Chapter 10, The Heart of Worship. The heart of worship is surrender. Surrender is an unpopular word. He says, in today's competitive culture, we are taught to never give up and never give in. But it is the natural response to God's amazing love and mercy. You know, the kind of mercy where Noah and his family are the only ones spared. Or the kind of mercy where the vast majority of humanity that has ever lived would spend eternity in hell for not guessing the right set of religious propositions. True worship, bringing God pleasure, happens when you give yourself completely to God. God wants your life, all of it. 95% is not enough. So we're supposed to praise him because he wants us to, because he made us to praise him. And you think this constitutes a purpose. According to Rick, there are three barriers that block our total surrender to God. Fear, pride, and confusion. We don't realize how much God loves us. We want to control our own lives like independent adults or something. And we misunderstand the meaning of surrender. You know, because in religious doublespeak, surrender means victory. Even though you only get victory by dying to self and that's how you get your new life. And if you're Catholic, you also eat a corpse every Sunday. I am not making this up. Page 79, top of the page, you can check for yourselves. If you want to know how much you matter to God, look at Christ with his arms outstretched on the cross saying, I love you this much. <laughs> Rick says, we don't want to admit that we're just creatures and not in charge of everything. Hi, Rick. My name's Angie. I'm an ape. I am a creature. I am not in charge of everything. I have no problem admitting this. Um, it has nothing to do with your God or your purpose or your bullshit theology. Rick uses the word we deceptively um, because many of the things that he says we to, I don't know if he means himself, all humans, me. I, I definitely don't feel I apply to the vast majority of Rick Warren's we's. Here's an example. We want to have it all and do it all, and we become upset when it doesn't happen. Then when we notice that God gave others characteristics we don't have, we respond with envy, jealousy, and self-pity. Wow, Rick, you sound like a screaming toddler. However, that's not actually my approach to life or other people or circumstances or the advantages some people have that others don't. And now we come to the question, what it means to surrender. Well, first, Rick Warren takes a few paragraphs to tell us what that doesn't mean. Excuse me, somebody wants a glass of water. Surrendering is best demonstrated in obedience. You say, yes, Lord, to whatever he asks of you. Okay, so surrendering is doing whatever he wants. Does sound like the original definition of surrender, Rick. Uh, wow, surrendered people obey God's word even if it doesn't make sense. Again, Rick is very insistent that people should do, that people should obey immediately and without question, even if it doesn't make sense. He stressed that specific point that you should obey even if it doesn't make sense multiple times. At no point has he suggested uh, a fairly standard Christian approach, which is to check the idea that you're having or the thing that you think is from God, checking it against the scriptures, which, you know, hey, still dangerous. Abraham killing Isaac, being willing to, totally in the Bible. There's nothing in here about how to discern the voice of God or to know when God is telling you to do something. We haven't gotten into that. We're in chapter 10. And so far, all we've been told is that immediate obedience is the only way to satisfy your purpose in life. Rick Warren is giving the most dangerous advice I think possible to give. 
you know you're surrendered to God when you rely on God to work things out instead of trying to manipulate others, force your agenda, or control the situation. Ow! You know what this reminds me of? Al-Anon and other 12-step cults that teach that the only way to take control of your life is by admitting that you have no ability to take control of your life and must turn it over to a higher power. That's a separate cult and I'll get into it a separate time, but for now, let me just say, fuck you, Rick Warren, and fuck you, Al-Anon. Surrendered hearts show up best in relationships. You don't edge others out, you don't demand your rights, and you aren't self-serving when you're surrendered. So in other words, being surrendered to God is exactly the same as being a battered wife. Got it, abused doormat. That is Rick Warren's purpose for you, to be God's doormat. <gasps> Sign up today. As for people who want to live for God, but also want to plan ahead for their future, no, 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 no. Retirement is not the goal of a surrendered life because it competes with God for the primary attention of our lives. I've long said, if you're putting God first, you're putting your family last. Apparently you're also putting yourself, your finances, your future, your stability, possibly your children's future and stability because, hey, if you don't have retirement funds and they need to take care of you, that's gonna chip into their future. Genuine surrender says, Father, if this problem, pain, sickness, or circumstances is needed to fulfill your purpose and glory in my life or in another's. Please don't take it away. This level of maturity does not come easy. I guess that level of maturity didn't come to Rick Warren yet. Last week on Twitter, he was talking about he'd been gardening in his yard. Uh, I guess he had a fire stick plant, something very hot and spicy. He got the sap into his eye, rushed to the hospital, everything else had actual eye specialists look at him, everything else, gave the credit to God, and also prayed on Twitter that God would use his pain for God's glory. But nowhere in there did he pay, pray that God would leave him blind or, you know, take away his vision or keep that, you know, don't take away this horrible pain, Lord. And I'm not saying Rick should have, but he's telling other people they should. And fuck you, Rick Warren. I was in pain for three years. I prayed that God would use it to his advantage. I prayed if there was something God wanted me to learn out of it. I tried to get every godly good thing out of walking with a dislocated hip for three years. The blessing of surrender? Stop quarreling with God. If you agree with him, you'll have peace at last. Wow. Like the rapist saying, don't fight it? Rick, I get it, your God is big and bad. He wears the biggest britches. I don't think that makes him a good guy and you haven't done anything to persuade me otherwise. His commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. The freedom to obey without question someone who owns you. Surrender is not the best way to live. It is the only way to live. Nothing else works. All other approaches lead to frustration, disappointment, and self-destruction. It's best based on what, Rick? Where are you getting this stuff? I am surrendered to nothing and no one, and my life is fantastic because of that. I love not being under the heel of anyone. It is wonderful. I highly recommend it. If you are currently under somebody else's heel, if when your partner, roommate, spouse, parent comes home and you are filled with dread, get out. It might be hard. You might be broke. I understand. But get out. Trust me. Trust me. Get out. You will never, ever, ever regret. Apparently, Rick doesn't have a damn clue what the word rational means. He says surrendering your life is not a foolish emotional impulse, but a rational, intelligent act. The most responsible and sensible thing you can do with your life. What he's talking about is slavery. 
slavery to a god who owns you, created you, can take you out whenever he wants. You have to do whatever he says without question right away or it's disobedience and it's torture in the basement for you. How on earth does he jump from that to responsible, sensible, rational, or intelligent? I think Rick needs a lot of words defined. Eventually, you discover that the greatest hindrance to God's blessing in your life is not others, it is yourself. Your self-will, stubborn pride, and personal ambition. Ugh, how dare you have that? So, Rick Warren, first, God is hindered? There are hindrances to God's blessing? Wait, I thought he was all powerful. I thought he had like every single fucking detail planned, including the moment that I'd read this book. Wait a second, Rick. What kind of God do you have? An impotent one or an omnipotent one? Make up your fucking mind. Second, it was because of my stubborn self-will and pride and ambition that I walked with a cane for three years, that God withheld the blessing of two functional legs from me? Oh, put Jesus in the driver's seat of your life and take your hands off the steering wheel. Don't be afraid. Nothing under his control can be out of control. Would you like to tell that to Andrea Yates and her five dead children? This is not responsible advice, Rick. You should be aware that there are lots and lots of crazy people who are Christian in this country. Scott Roeder ring any bells? Oh wait, maybe you think he's a hero. I'm not totally sure of your position. I know you'd rather see me die in childbirth than have an abortion. Jesus said, if people want to follow me, they must give up the things they want. They must be willing to give up their lives daily to follow me. Well, of course, Jesus was a cult leader. And then he tells us the repugnant story of a successful televangelist who said, when I was a young man, I made a contract with God. This is what he credits his success to. I've never heard of him, but I'm sure other people have. Uh, when I, I, I literally wrote it out and signed my name at the bottom. It said, from this day forward, I am a slave of Jesus Christ. Ah, surrender. It does equal slavery, just like I thought. Day 10, point to ponder. The heart of worship is surrender. So when he says you're supposed to worship God, what he really means is you're supposed to surrender. And as we've learned in this chapter, surrender really means slavery. Ah, the heart of worship is slavery. Verse to remember, surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purposes. Question to consider, what area of my life am I holding back from God? All of it. I do a much better job running my own life than God did. Everybody on YouTube, have great and godless days. Peace.